I tried to describe it to my pawpaw living parents, why I was quitting the school system. It sounded so squirrely, I swear. I called up all excited that I was quitting my job, that I was going to be on television. And my mother listened. And you know when you don't hear anything, you just hear people inhaling, like you don't hear them breathe. She finally said, talk to your father. So she handed the phone to my dad. You know, my dad, pretty direct guy. So you're going to do this when you come home from your real job, right, baby? And I said, well, no, I'm going to not be a teacher. I'm going to be on television. Big son. So he said, well, tell me about it. Now, you got to remember the show was not on yet. Now, listen how squirrely this sounds. Well, um, I'm going to be like in this inner city neighborhood. My folks broke their back to get me out of the ghetto it, onto a farm. Okay, so now here I am. Uh, I'm going to be in this inner city uh, neighborhood, and, and I'm going to be talking to this eight-foot yellow bird, and, uh, uh, and I couldn't even hear them breathing. <laughs> and I didn't even get to the part. And this grouchy thing's going to leap out of this trash can and yell at me. I mean, it sounded squirrely to me, too. I said, well, um, and so my father must have been shaking his head. He said, well, talk to your mother. So he gives the phone back to mom. And she said in the most pitiful little voice, can you come home this weekend? They would never admit it, but I swear they thought I was on drugs. <laughs> this was the 60s, I think. They said, my child had gone to New York and gone crazy. An eight-foot yellow bird. She's going to give up the schools. I was the first college graduate on both sides of the family. I didn't know my mother and her whole prayer group had prayed me up on this teaching job, and I'm going to give it up for an eight-foot yellow bird and this thing that's going to jump and move back to the ghetto. Oh, my God.